Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Box and Reviews and How To, and today we'll be answering a question which I get asked actually very frequently is what Wi Fi card do you recommend for my PC? Well, it's very easy one of these. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the UBIT. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. So this is actually a really super cost-effective way of adding Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to PC. So say for instance you've picked up a motherboard, say something like the MSI B450-A Pro for example, which really cost-effective board, you can build up a really nice little system with it, which actually, yes, this is why we're actually doing this, but that board doesn't have onboard Bluetooth and it doesn't have onboard Wi-Fi. So you need some way of doing it. Now you could obviously, if you wanted to, you could spend a little bit more money and get a better motherboard, but that isn't necessarily the easiest thing to do, again, depending where it is you live in the world, the boards may not be available, so you have to get yourself a separate card. Now, people often say to me, which is the best one to get? Well, the USB ones generally tend to be the cheaper and obviously considerably easier to use, but in reality, they often also introduce their own inherent problems, being the fact that they are USB, so they quite often just stop working for no reason, you have to unplug them and plug them back in, and also they do weirdly get some other sort of interference from the system itself. So that's why I actually quite like using these. This is a PCI Express card from UBIT. Now they do a couple of different versions in their range. This is one of the more cost-effective ones using Wi-Fi 5. It supports up to AC standards. You've got up to 867 megabits per second on five gigahertz and also the 300 megabits per second on the older kind of G series or the, the older Wi-Fi types. 2.4 gigahertz, etc., etc. So this actually ticks a lot of boxes. Also, as well, Bluetooth 4.2, which is not the best of Bluetooth, but certainly, again, for around about £20, which this retails for at the moment, it is a very good option. And being that most of the USB dongles that you can get, even some of the kind of better ones, generally tend to be around about the sort of 15, 20 pounds mark, but still have those inherent issues with disconnection, etc. This is a much more reliable solution. So let's take a look and see what we actually get in the box. And you can see what is included. And then we're gonna go through, do an installation, and we'll do some speed tests as well so you can see what it's like. Now this room, which we're gonna be testing it in, this is in the middle of our house, and this room is always prone for Wi-Fi issues. Always has been, whether it's 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz, always this room in particular is the problem one. I guess there's a lot of stuff going on. We've got studio lights, the cameras, etc. We've got stone walls, so yeah. Everything is going against us in this particular room, but this is where we're going to test it. So this is possibly going to be worst case scenario. So if we get good results on this, chances are your results will be far more favorable. Anyway, looking at the box, seeing what we get. So this is a PCI Express card and it fits into a PCI Express times one slot. So chances are, regardless of what motherboard you've got and what other peripheral cards you've got on there, there's a very strong chance you're going to have a chance for this to fit in your PC. Uh, you don't need a four times slot, which is sometimes necessary with other cards, but yeah, this is a single times one slot. If you're not sure and you need a little bit of help or advice, don't forget you can reach out to us on our Discord chat or also just send us an email or just comment on this video and ask me, tell me what motherboard you've got, tell me what components you've got, and I'll tell you if it's a likelihood you can actually be able to install this. So anyway, that is the card itself. It's based on the Intel chipset. It's, I think it's the AX200. I'll have to double check that. Essentially, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. It's great for Wi-Fi, it's great for Bluetooth, and it's very easy and cost-effective to do. You have got two SMA-type connectors on the back now, which is actually handy because we do have a dual antenna setup. So one is the main, one is the auxiliary, and they're super easy to do. Literally, all you do is just screw them into position and then fold them up and aim them however you want to. On the back of your PC, you can if you want to. Aim them down or aim them out or whatever if it's interfering with maybe your VGA card, the display port or HDMI that kind of stuff so yeah pretty flexible thing to do you can orientate the antennas however you see fit the card itself again PCI Express times one very small will fit in even if you've got a graphics card directly above it there's a strong chance that because it's quite a small PCB it's not going to entirely block the fans obviously that isn't the best thing you want to do to block any of the air coming into your GPU but if uh, the worst case scenario you have to then it doesn't block it tremendously on the back of the card, there's another connection. So this is for a USB connection. Now, a lot of people do ask this question as well, which is one of the reasons why we're going through this video again. We have done a previous video, which you can check out up here, which was ages ago, and we, yeah, we get loads of questions on it. So I was trying to figure out what questions need to be answered in this particular wrap-up video. So yes, that is your USB connection. So if you want to use the Bluetooth side of this, the Bluetooth 4.2, then you do have to have it connected to a USB header on your motherboard. 
if you just want to use it as Wi-Fi, just as a Wi-Fi standalone card, it works entirely through the PCI Express bus, so you don't need to connect up the USB. So hopefully that clears up some of the issues some of you have had. And talking of the USB, this is the USB cable. So this uses a traditional nine pin USB type connection, although only four of the pins are actually required. So if you've got another device in your system, which is using one half of the USB type port, then you can use this on the other half. Potentially you could rewire those pins if you really had to. You can also get splitters for these. I'll put the links for these in the video description as well. So this will split a standard nine pin motherboard header into two, which is very simple and straightforward to do. Obviously it's gonna add a little bit more to the cost, but if it gets you out of a fix, then it's definitely worth its weight in gold. Cable itself, not particularly long. We're looking around about 10 inches there. Obviously USB connection one end, that one goes into the back of the card. So do think about that when you're routing it, etc. But yeah, very straightforward, very simple. But just to clarify, if you don't want to use Bluetooth or you actually prefer not to use Bluetooth and you don't want it enabled on the system, just don't use this cable and Bluetooth will not function at all. Also with the card, it's very handy if you're using a media center or one of those small form factor boxes, it comes with a replacement back plate. So you can replace this from the standard full width one, which is your standard PCI Express blanking plate and you can use this smaller one, so again, half height. A lot of the kind of Dells and HP boxes, which may be slightly older and don't have Wi-Fi, for that, this is absolutely perfect. You do also get some mounting screws as well to actually attach that, and a really nice feature is you actually even get a screwdriver as well. So if for some reason you don't have a PH1 or a PH0 screwdriver in-house, then there's one included. You also do get as well a driver DVD, Sometimes you may need this. Uh, actually, sorry, it's a driver CD, I should say, mini CD. So for some instances, you may actually require this, but realistically, for pretty much most Windows versions, so I think it's from Windows XP upwards, I'll put it underneath so you can see for sure. But yeah, Windows XP, Windows 7, 8, 8.1, 10, and obviously Windows 11 as well. This will just plug and play, no problems at all. But if you want to use the drivers, you certainly can do, if you've got a drive that is. And if for any reason, after watching us install this, you've still got some questions or queries, they actually got a full color leaflet, which comes with it. And it basically goes through it in a real good detail. Also, their support is really good. Even on the back of the card, say for instance, you lose all this stuff and you throw your manual away, and you find one of these cards in your PC somewhere, actually on the back of it, there is a QR code and also website addresses. You can download the drivers and watch a full installation video from the manufacturers themselves. So yeah, I think they've pretty much thought of everything on this for the sake of about 20 pounds, which is what it is in the UK at the moment. I think this is actually one of the best buys on the market at the moment, I really do. And if you know of a better one, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. But anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's get on and actually install this thing. Okay, so this is the inside of our motherboard, and as you can see, quite conveniently, it says which board it is there. And actually, we're making use of our uh, super bright torch here, which is uh, very handy for these kind of projects. So I'll put some links in the video description for that as well. It's actually uh, a torch, which has got like a fluorescent tube type thing, and also a particularly bright lens LED on the front as well, which is uh, really good for seeing these tiny little pins down the bottom here, which otherwise you possibly would not see. Anyway, that's enough of that. So what we want to do is to find out which ports we actually need. So we need our USB connection for the Bluetooth. So if we look along this bottom section, you can see, if I use one of the antennas to point, you can see there is the USB header there. So we've got one plugged in for our front USBs there. So luckily we've got a spare one there. So we can plug that one in for the Bluetooth module. And for our PCI Express slots, we've got a couple available there. We could use this one if we want to, the 16 times slot, which is wired for four or we can use either these two bottom ones. Again, essentially it's gonna be down to the individual. Luckily on this one, we've got blanking plates there, so we could take out either one. I think probably just for the sake of simplicity, I'll go with the very bottom one, just to keep it a little bit further away from the graphics card and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully the antennas won't go too high and actually interfere with the, uh, the connectivity on the back there. So what we're gonna to need to do is to remove one of our PCI blanking plates here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold that out, which sadly on this board is a captive one. So we're just gonna bend that, wiggle it a little bit, and then that will pop out. So that can go into the bin. So that is giving us our spare slot. I think probably it's gonna be a good idea to plug in our USB first of all. So the USB again, down in this bottom section. So we've got a little keyed section on our USB plug there. So just make sure the keyed section there matches up on the board itself. If we take a closer look at that, I think it's down in the bottom right hand corner. So, yeah, so that's it in position. So all we do is just push that onto the actual header. 
give it a little wiggle and that is it in place. That's probably an easier way of doing it and that way you can have the cable actually out and plug that in after and then cable manage it should you need to when you're done. Now because this particular case is got a section here so we can't actually quite see that so if I give you a bit of better light there you can see this is actually kind of all blanked off so we need to actually remove this section first of all uh, to actually get into it which luckily this all appears to be on thumb screws so I'm going to require a screwdriver because the thumb screws are on a little bit tight so I'm just going to undo this one and same on this one and that section's out of the way so now we can get to our PCI Express mounting holes so with the card we're just going to hold it in place there and those gold teeth there need to go into the section on the motherboard which you can see just in there so we're just going to line that up on the back you can hold on to the back of the card if you want to to kind of guide it in and there we go that's gone in actually particularly easily so that's all well and good. All we need to do now is to put a fixing screw in. So with our screwdriver, get a screw. Magnetic one's going to be helpful for you here if you can. And just line that up on the back there, which is not easy for me to see actually on this angle. So that is that in place. Card's in place. So if we want to at this point now, we can attach our antenna on the back. Again, very simple, straightforward to do. Always do is twist those on. And you can bend those up into the position of your choice. Sometimes it's kind of best to do it like that. So then you don't have the uh, anything in the way of that. So the next part of this is to actually plug in the USB cable. So again, we've got this section on the back here, which plugs into this part, and it is actually keyed on the side. So there's little lugs on there, so it only physically fits in one way. So if you try to plug it in and it doesn't actually fit, then just turn it around and try it the other way, which actually, because of the angle I'm on, I can't even see which way it goes in myself. I don't want to go that way, so let's spin it around. That's much better. So there we go, that is that installed. Now, obviously, if you want to, you can just cable manage the cable out of the way. That's absolutely fine. So that's it. Literally, that is it installed. So we just need to put our PCI Express back plate back on, on the back here. Put this back into place, and then we can fire it up, and we'll do a quick speed test and see what our speed test actually comes out like. Hopefully... Should be pretty decent again this is a particularly awful room for wi-fi but if we get a good signal here then uh, it's going to be absolutely awesome we are on a virgin media connection which i believe is up to 300 megabits per second might be 400 so anyway we'll see uh, we'll see what we get actually when we fire up the system okay so we just set up the uh, device and if we take a look into device manager you can see now in our network adapters, we've got our Bluetooth device. We've also got the wireless AC 7265, et cetera, et cetera. I did have the Wi-Fi and also the LAN cable connected just to get a test. So I just did a quick test with our LAN cable. So that's what we got with it actually connected via Cat5. And we're gonna test again now with the Wi-Fi. And we shouldn't get anywhere near the same speeds under Wi-Fi, but she's still getting pretty decent speeds. This is currently connected to the 2.4 gigahertz part of our network. So doesn't seem too bad actually. So there we go. And we've got an extra one millisecond of latency against our ethernet cable, 117.6 download. 35.4 on the upload so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to connect to our 5 gigahertz network so now we should be on our 5 gigahertz so I'm going to run the same test again yep slowly climbing
So not perfect, again, five gigahertz in here because we've got solid brick walls, etc., and a lot of interference. It isn't particularly good. I'm actually gonna run it again, see if we can get any quicker. I think it's gonna to top out around about that sort of level. And that is slightly climbing. It's getting moderately better. So there we go, a little bit better, about 15 to 20 megabits per second faster on our particular setup. So let's uh, conclude things. Okay, so there we go. That is the job done and dusted. And hopefully now this PC behind me is gonna be winging its way to uh, its new owner, which hopefully they're gonna be very pleased with it. And now it's got Wi-Fi they can actually get on the internet. So now we can conclude what do we actually get for our money? I think actually we get a pretty decent bargain here. We get the option of 2.4 gigahertz, we get the option of 5 gigahertz, and also we get the option of Bluetooth 4.2. Now Bluetooth, you may or may not need, but the Wi-Fi these days is becoming more and more of a necessity. Now again, there are problems with this room, and as you can see from the results which we had, we didn't actually get that much of a speed boost using 5 gigahertz, which allows me to answer another question which we get asked all the time, and that is, Mike, which network should I use? Should I use 2.4 gigahertz or should I use 5 gigahertz? Now, if you're lucky enough to have the option to use either, then you can switch between the two. I would say personally, looking at the tests and my own personal experiences, I would probably stick with 2.4 gigahertz. It does appear to be a stronger signal, a more resilient signal, and does tend to go a little bit further in length, as in it penetrates walls a little bit easier. Whereas 5 gigahertz, you do get the uplift in speed in some instances, but the drawback is you don't get that long distance. So if you're maybe in a room further away from your internet provider, then you probably want to stick to 2.4 gigahertz for a more reliable signal. It's all well trying to get carried away with uh, numbers and speed ratings and doing speed tests and proving who's got the fastest internet, but reality is who's got the most reliable internet. And realistically, the only way you'll find out is by actually trying both of the networks in your house for a little while and seeing which one does better. I would imagine for most people, the 2.4 gigahertz will probably be the beneficial one to use overall and will have less dropouts and potentially less latency. So anyway, that has been how to install a Wi-Fi card in your PC. Hopefully the video's been possibly interesting and useful and maybe you've learned a few things on the way. If there's anything else which you feel that I didn't cover or you want to know more, then let us know in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.